Hey guys, welcome back from Classic Work. Today we're going to talk about how to read dial calipers. Okay, This is a topic that I think a lot of people are scared of these um, because they're all mechanical basically and people don't know how to read the scale on the side or how to use the fractions basically of, of an inch how they actually are used. So they're they're intimidating. I will say that first ones I ever picked up, they they're one of the things like you see a bunch of moving stuff and you don't know really what it means and all that kind of stuff. So we're, I'm gonna try to break it down as simply as I can on how to use these. Now I got two different styles here. This is a six inch and this is a twelve inch variant. Okay, so we're using standard here. So basically, there are three parts to a dial caliper. The first part right here are these jaws. Okay, these open up as you move outward, and these are these are known as your OD jaws. The ones on the back right here, if you can see them, these guys, these are known as ID jaws. And then finally, here at the tail end of them is a depth gauge. So the more you slide out your dial, the deeper this plunger goes. To show a demonstration on how that works, how you would use these. So I've got a part here and I want to know what the thickness is on it. So you'll grab your calipers and use your thumb wheel. Most of them do have a thumb wheel here on the bottom. You'll push them, push it up and that's how you would measure an outside diameter. And then to use the inside ones, you'll turn this over, measure in between, and you can rock your calipers slightly so you can get the most accurate reading. That's how you'd read the inside. And then finally the depth mic, if you this would not be a good part for this, but if you wanted to, you can extend your caliper out and then you can actually plunge down till you touch, just like so. And then that would give you your depth. So just a little look at that. So that's pretty much how you use them. There's little tricks to it. You'll learn that as a certain amount of actual pressure that you actually put on the tool, you don't put, you don't just clamp down on it with your hand. You want to be real, real gentle. You almost want to be like a lock picker, like somebody has a very, very gentle touch. Uh, old time machinists, they they will tell you that it is it's a feel. Uh, mechanics have a feel, knowing how tight to torque a bolt. Uh, machinists have a feel on how how loose or how tight a pin's supposed to fit, how you're supposed to handle these, that kind of stuff. So, now not all calipers have all three features. These 12 inches here, 12 inches, they do have the OD jaws and the ID jaws, but they, this set does not have a a uh, a depth gauge on it. It's one of the only set I've ever had that has no depth on it. It's got a slot for it, but these didn't come with it for whatever reason. But anyways, so let's get down to the nitty gritty and show you how to read them. Okay, there's a few things that we got to go over before I actually show you how to actually read the calipers. And this is a state of mind, basically. To read calipers efficiently and effectively, you have to talk like a machinist. And I know that's gonna sound dumb, but once you do this, it'll be a breeze, okay? So I got two numbers written down here. We've got one inch point two seven five, okay? Now the way that I just read that out is like how everybody else reads it. Do not get into that habit. What you want to say, that's one inch 275 thou, okay? Anything after the decimal point here is whatever that number is in total, and you say it like that. So this is 275 thou. This number right here is 897 thou, okay? If it's different, if it is like this, we got a point, zero, zero, it's hard to write upside down, three, okay? That's three thou. 
okay? Don't say 0 .003, say 3,000. So remember that, you know, from elementary school that, you know, you have your, your tenths, your hundredths, and your thousands place, basically. And you read it like that, if that makes any sense. Here's another one. Here's point zero. Okay? That's 11,000. I know the points on the top end because I'm having to do everything backwards. But that's how you read it. And once you start doing that, everything gets easier. So let me show you another one. Okay. We're going to go over some of these real quickly. Okay. So I want you to say these together with me. and I promise you this will help. So this one right here would be 10 inch, 657 thou. Okay. This would be 12 inch and 1 thou. Okay. This would be 5 inch and 87 thou. Okay. We have no whole number here, so this would be 991 thou. Okay. And then here's 600, 6 inches, 785 thou, basically. That is how you say it. That is how you read it. That is how you write it down. Okay. Now I threw a curveball in here. Say there's an actual decimal point here. So this is 3 inch, 799 thou. And this last number over here, we're in the 10 thousandths place, okay? When you read it as a machinist, you do not say, you know, 0.7998. That's not how you read that. It'll be 799 thou and 8 tenths, okay? That's how it's said in the machine world. Now you'll have to explain that to somebody. Unless they're an actual machinist, they'll know exactly what you're talking about. But once you get to the fourth decimal, and ten, ten, ten thousandth of an inch, most run-of-the-mill people are not ever going to use that. This is grinding range, basically. That's the most precise form of machinist that machining there is, is grinding, believe it or not. So you don't have to worry about that number, but I wanted to put it out there so you knew how to, how to actually read it. So let me write another one down. Okay, so we'll write another one here. So say it together, six inch, 25 thou, and nine tenths. That's how you would say that, okay? You get all that into your head. If you need to rewatch the video, go back to where I talk about this and get, get that kind of notion in your head. And now we can start to read calipers. I'm gonna try to show how to do this as best I can. So basically, you have a scale on the inside of the actual calipers. And whatever this edge of the calipers falls on, that is your whole hundredth of an inch, if that makes any kind of sense. So you can see that there's one. So that's 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. And then your dial over here will tell you what ratio in between that it actually is. So to read, this number that we've just come up with right here, that would be 500, and then you look at your dial, you count from zero forward, and that should be 520, 26 thou. So if you count your, your hash marks, so that would be 25 right there, there's one past it, so that would be 26. Okay, simple enough, huh? So let's do another one. We'll get into the inch, okay? We'll do one about right here, okay? So you look at your, this side first. So we know we're past an inch here. That, that's an inch and you see how the numbers start over. We've got one inch, 100, 200. So we're not at three yet. We come over to our dial and we see that we're at 60, but we gotta count the marks on the 60 and it looks like it's three, okay? So we say this is one inch, 263. That's how you would read that, okay? Pretty simple, right? All right, so let's do one more just to clarify that. This is really, really simple stuff. Let's do a bigger number. I'm gonna try to fool y'all a little bit too, okay? All right, so this is a harder one. So if we look on our scale here, we're at 2 inch. 
you can see. 2 inch, 100, 200, 300. And it looks like we're at the 4. Well, let's look at our dial real quick. Okay, if you can see, we're not to the 0 yet. Okay, so that means that we're still at the 300. So then we look at the dial and we see that we're at 95. So that would read 2 inch, 300, and 95 thou. Okay? So, it's not complicated. I know I just showed you a bunch of, bunch of stuff, you know, before we even got to the calipers. It's not hard. But if you don't have that mindset from the gate, this makes it a lot more difficult. And now you can have confidence in knowing that you can use these. I'm going to try to show you a little bit about technique on how to measure a part. Now, if you can take the part itself and be able to turn it and have it in your hand, that makes it a lot easier because you can just place the part on a table like we've got right here and you can cinch up your calipers to it and like I said there's a touch to it there's a feel you just have to practice to get good with it but then you'll do a little movement do a little wiggling and then try to pull your your calipers off as smooth as you can you can read them with it on the part too but if you watch your dial and it doesn't move when it comes off then you should be pretty close now I don't know if y'all can read that from here I'll try my best to read this upside down. With this measurement right here, see that we're at the 8. And then we look up at the dial. We're just past 70 up here, so this would be 871 file. Okay, so we'll, I'll do another demonstration. We we'll use the inside mics this time. So we'll measure in between here. Once again, you can you got to use like a little bit of finesse in your movements. This one happens to be a whole number. But you can look over here. There's an 8. That's a 9. So that's 900 thou. So it's pretty neat. It's impressive what you can do with it. So yeah, like I said, this is not hard. Hey, well, I'll show you the depth mic real quick. So we'll do the same thing. You run your depth mic down actually and you just kind of plunge the tool on top of it like so and you can read that number so this one is 521 and a half thou so it'd be five tenths if you were to say that so it'd be 521 thou and five tenths so there you go Calipers are a great tool. I know a lot of people like digital calipers because they can't read these. That's the only reason why I, I don't use digital calipers. I've seen it time and time again. You want to use them, the battery's dead. You got to go find a battery. If you learn how to use these, these are the best way to go, uh, in my opinion. Now, they, they do get damaged if you drop them. They will hurt them. These are very, very delicate instruments and you gotta treat them as such. Now, the cool thing about them too is they come in a couple of different variants and these are the ones I keep in my truck. These calipers are dual purpose. They will read standard or metric. So the black needle here is standard and the red needle is metric and you can see that they run in two different orientations basically. So your scale on the bottom is all standard, just like we did on the other caliper, and then the scale on top is all metric. So, and they work the same way, basically. The black dial on the very outside here is all standard, and the red dial in the center is all metric. So, very handy tool. It's very nice that you can measure something, and at a glance, you can tell whether it was done in metric or if it was done in standard. So, for instance, if I'm reading this right, this is definitely standard because it's more or less an inch and a half, basically. So 
at a glance it's nice if you notice that the red uh, caliper lines up on a whole number or something like that more likely it'll be metric but the same goes for the metric the only difference is uh, millimeters are already really fine so to give you an idea let's just say we'll do one inch which I should know the conversion factor by now but one inch in millimeters is 25.4 millimeter so you can see that the 0.4 is on the red dial and if you you probably can't read that because it's so fine but yeah that is 25 mil so it, it's handy to have. I, I like my dual my dual calipers. They're they're handy to have sometimes. Remember that these tools are only as accurate as I think it's plus or minus two thou. So they do not replace micrometers. If you don't know what a micrometer is, that's one of these little babies. Okay. This is a mic. I know a lot of people call these mics, but they're not. These are calipers. And the main difference between these two tools is this has a rigid frame where this doesn't and these have dials where these actually have hash marks and use very very fine threads to do the measuring and these are accurate within one ten thousandth of an inch so that's point zero 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 one so or one tenth of an inch is what we call it in the machine world so these here are two thou and these here are what less than a twentieth of that so yes there's there's no replacement for a mic just like there's no replacement for a caliper they both go hand in hand with each other and they work beautifully together so i hope that gives you some insight i know this video is probably going to be a little long for what it is but hope y'all get something out of it till next time y'all take care and god bless